Hi, I'm Jess, and welcome to Spooky Movie Club. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Spooky Movie Club. I hope you're having a wonderful day whenever you're watching this. We are getting into week three's movie, um, which was The Shining. I'm excited to talk about it. A lot of interesting things I noticed when watching it. But uh, first, I guess some housekeeping is, is what they say. Um, I'm wearing this amazing new um, Spooky Movie Club hoodie. It's got the Spooky Movie Club logo on the back. Um, it is now on the Etsy store. And for this week only, for 10% off, you can use the code Red Rum. And I'll leave all of that stuff below. Spooky Movie Club also needed a mascot. Um, Rump Roast is obviously our supreme leader. He's the leader of the Spooky Movie Club, but we need the mascot. And the mascot for the Spooky Movie Club is the flashing gremlin. Right there. I think that just is the vibe of the Spooky Movie Club. <laughs> just this crazy-ass gremlin. I love this little guy. Um, but I'm going to read the back of the box now. But if you want to skip ahead like to next week's movie or the discussion, I'm going to leave timestamps below. The Shining, Shining, um, a Stanley Kubrick film. Uh, this is this is my first Stanley Kubrick film that I watched, and then I watched um, 2001: A Space Odyssey recently. I've only seen those two. Have I seen Eyes Wide Shut? I may have seen that. Not sure, but definitely this. Definitely 2001: A Space Odyssey. So two at the at the least. I've seen two Stanley Kubrick films. It was in 4K. Gorgeous. All right, let's go. Academy Award winner Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. Poor Shelley, apparently she's crazy now. That makes me so sad. Star and director Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Stephen King's disturbing blockbuster horror novel. Writer Jack Torrance, a former alcoholic, accepts a job as the winter caretaker for a hotel high in the Rocky Mountains, isolating him, his wife, and their psychic young son until spring. But when the first blizzard blocks the only road out, the hotel's stored energy from evil past deeds begins to drive Jack insane. And there may be no escape for his family in this haunting story of madness, memory, and violence. That is very interesting, their description. I mean, I've never read The Shining. Um, apparently, it's like a thousand million pages long. Just a bunch of rambling. Um... And I've never seen Dr. Sleep. Have it, but I haven't seen it yet. But it's interesting how they, the very, the, the very surface level, you know, kind of watch. They go crazy. There are hauntings in this hotel. Drive Jack insane. Um, but yeah, we'll get more into it with my thoughts. So my thoughts on The Shining. This was probably my third fourth watch of this movie um we watched it in 4k so we were able to watch it on the 4k tv and we have a 4k player and it looked first of all it looked gorgeous um everything was so crystal clear and the sweeping shots everything just looked beautiful i have to get that right out of the way so if you have a 4k player and you have 4k tv and you love the shining and you don't have the 4k version definitely recommend picking that up because it was beautiful so i've seen this movie a couple times already but this time i wanted to go into it with a more critical eye a more analyzing eye not just for like entertainment purposes and i think that kind of was detrimental to my viewing this time possibly because i was kind of like really trying to look you know for different things um and not really kind of just enjoying the whole story as a whole because this is one of my favorite um, horror films. Uh, what I noticed right off the bat this time on this watch, and I don't know if it was just the new mix of this version or what, but the music, my God, it was just blaring, intense. I don't remember this at all in any of, of my other watches. Um, but it really kind of elevated it i think a bit just noticing the music i'll have to go i wonder if it's the same if you stream it but it was just so intense and it reminded me a lot of 2001 a space odyssey because that music when that really gets going that is like in your face blaring hello i'm here 
I guess that's maybe his style, Stanley Kubrick's style. And I guess I'll have to figure that out when I watch like his other films, like Clockwork Orange, etc., etc. But that's the first thing I noticed right off the bat. Obviously, also the gorgeous 4K resolution. So I went into it, like I said, with a more critical eye. I watched a um, theory video on YouTube about how Wendy's character was actually like insane and this and certain things that were happening in the hotel were her and her I can't search for videos on Apple Watch. Oh my god. It's how it's how nine thousand. Oh my god. Okay, wow. Some how's gonna get me. Okay. Um I watched a video on YouTube about how it was really Wendy who was kind of going insane and different scenarios. Like when she walked into a room, there was no light switch. But when Jack walked into the room, there was a light switch. And how she's like playing these like things in her head. And, you know, she's gone crazy. So I was really trying to like look for that aspect of it. Um, And some things I noticed are like when you go in and um, Danny has that first kind of episode there's like a dopey sticker on the wall, and then there's no dopey sticker on the wall. There's Kool-Aid on the fridge, and there's no Kool-Aid on the fridge. There's Kool-Aid in the in the walk-in, and there's no Kool-Aid in the walk-in. There's a table, and then no table. Um, when Danny is sit- seating, sitting, sitting, when Danny is sitting on the carpet and the, the ball rolls to him, the pattern in the carpet is a certain way, a line that draws to him, and the ball rolls in a line. And then they switch the camera, and then they switch back, and then the pattern is opposite. There is no line in front of Danny on the carpet. There's also a moment, it's relatively early, where Wendy brings Jack breakfast, and they're facing one way, and she's talking to him. And then all of us, they cut to something, and then they cut back, and the camera had flipped. And that was really jarring, because we were watching it, and we were just like, wait, wasn't this, like that way and and it honestly like it was driving kind of me insane because like you notice something and there's something there and then there's not something there so i don't know per se if if it was wendy who was crazy i mean i'm not i mean obviously there's a case for everything there's also a case that you know jack was a um was like I don't even know if I can say this on YouTube, like <laughs> molesting his son. Um, and that's why there that, there's that scene at the end when Wendy goes in and the, there's the bear with the, um, the man in the room. Um, but the, just this film has just so many layers to it that it takes a lot of rewatches to kind of delve deep into it. But for me, I kind of just see it as all the different changes, something's there, something's not there. To me, I think he just wanted the audience to feel like they're crazy. Like you're in this hotel, things are changing on you. You're also going crazy. I feel like that's what Stanley was going for in my opinion. Not to say that like a certain person was crazy, but he wanted the audience to feel like they were also going crazy in this hotel. Like they were Jack. That's my interpretation. My interpretation of it. There's also a scene that we thought was interesting when Danny comes back from the room and he has like that mark on his neck. And Wendy picks him up. She's freaking out. And she's she turns to Jack and she's like, you did this. You did this to him. And he's just like, what is happening? And then she runs out of the room. And then... Next scene, Jack is in the gold ballroom and he's having a drink. And Wendy runs in and is like, oh my God, you have to go to room 237. There's somebody with us in the hotel. Like, you, this is the person who strangled Danny. Like, you just blame Danny strangling on your husband. What is happening? Are we all insane? What is going on? Like, that is kind of what I felt with this watch is that, like, we're all going crazy. And I do have to say that, like, this was made in, what, 1980? 81? 80? 1980. 
there was no, I'm pretty sure there's no VHS tapes back then for you to pop this in and watch whenever you wanted. Don't even know if you could watch it on cable at this point in time. Probably should have done my research, but not many people are going to, we're going to go back to the theaters to see this. They're going to see it once, think it was amazing. Um, just take it at surface level that the ghosts haunted this hotel and, you know, um, Jack went crazy and that would be it. But this movie has so many different layers to it that you kind of need to rewatch it to kind of get the whole experience. And I feel like Stanley was kind of ahead of his time with that. Like, because it... All you could really see this was in the theaters when this came out. Maybe he was trying to get more money and make people go see it again to really kind of figure out what was going on. It was just so interesting how the back of the box is just like, there are ghosts in this hotel because of the the old man who killed his children, who was the old caretaker and killed his, his children and his wife. That's driving this whole place insane. That they're going that angle, but then like you go a different angle. I know that Stephen King did not like this version. So maybe I guess it's also worth reading the book to kind of figure out um, what's in there, what what take that is. But I mean, I, I love this film. I absolutely love this film. My final thoughts on The Shining and my fourth watch is it obviously still holds up. I think it is a fantastic film. Even if you're not into horror films, I mean, it's it's very it's very scary film, but I think it's a must see, just for anyone. I didn't find it scary. I was wondering if I was going to find it scary this time around, and I didn't really find it super scary. But I think that's also because I wasn't really watching it this time for entertainment purposes. I was watching it to kind of piece things together. But I mean. I can't say anything bad about this film. This film is amazing. And if you haven't seen it, drop what you're doing right now. It's on HBO Max or rent it wherever and watch it right now. Okay, so The Shining is done. What a wonderful movie. Wish we could end Community Choice Month right there. But unfortunately, we cannot. Um, we have one last movie, which was the top voted movie for Community Choice. And I think this was a huge joke. They're trying to trick me, trying to joke, trying to joke with me. I think this would be hilarious for me to review. And a lot, I don't think this even could technically be considered a horror film. <laughs> but, but it has vampires in it, so I guess kind of it can be. Oh, this pains, this pains me, this pains my heart. But um, this next movie for Spooky Movie Club top voted movie um recommended or put up for suggestion um from collateral who will never be offered another uh choice for spooky movie club um get ready get ready for it any guesses any guesses what vampire movie we could be watching this week guess below in the comments let's see if you're right and it is twilight <laughs> Now you're like, Jessica, why don't you have a DVD? You got, you got a movie, you got a DVD for everything. I don't want to own this. <laughs> this will be streamed. Um, obviously, obviously I've seen Twilight. I'm not going to, I'm just going to mess around. Okay, I've seen it. I've seen it a couple times. I don't, I don't hate it. It's, and I've mentioned Twilight and Vampire Month. Is it? It's a so bad, it's good movie. Um it's so bad oh my god it's so bad and i have to watch it again i recently watched all the twilights just to see like which one was the worst and which one kind of you know was fine uh twilight was like second to last um the last movie that they put out i don't remember what it was called is the worst it has like a, a cgi baby and it's terrible <laughs> it's terrible um at first it was an animatronic baby, and that was too terrifying, and they changed it to CGI. It's awful. Look it look it up on YouTube. Anyway, that's the next spooky movie of the of the week. Last one of community choice. If you it's gonna be a hoot, so definitely make sure you join us for the viewing party. 
All right, that about does it for this week's Spooky Movie Club. I hope you enjoyed watching The Shining. I hope you're very excited for Twilight coming up. If you want to join us for the viewing party, we're going to do that on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Discord. Uh, if you want to join us for live discussion of Twilight, we will be doing that on Twitch Saturday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're also still working our way through Resident Evil 2, the remake. So make sure you check that all that links out. Remember, if you want a Spooky Movie Club hoodie or a t-shirt or anything off the Etsy store, this week only, code REDRUM for 10, red rum for 10, for 10 percent off. If you can't make any of those, don't worry because I'll be back here on Sunday with the Twilight Review. Bye.